Hi, my name is Zander Fenter. This is a talk that I gave at the Grassland Society of South Africa Congress 2017 in Hootspreet, South Africa, and I'm sharing it online for those who are interested to listen to it. Here I share the results, preliminary results, from my PhD research on an experimental farm in the Eastern Cape. It falls under a broader project headed up by Conservation South Africa, invest investigating the effects of holistic planned grazing on both communal and commercial rangelands in the Eastern Cape. This talk of mine focuses on the herd effect within a, a, as a mechanism behind holistic planned grazing and it is told from an ox's eye view. Alan Savory um, coined the term holistic plan grazing and he developed uh, holistic management as a decision making adaptive decision making framework within holis within which holistic plan grazing operates. He took inspiration from the way wild herbivores graze and move over the landscape in tight herds at high densities which in from his in his perception differed to the way livestock system uh, cattle and livestock systems graze which he perceived to be um, scattered more loosely over the landscape to mimic this if the effect of the herds on the farm he proposed dividing the farm up into many grazing camps using portable electric fencing thereby upping the grazing densities to much higher densities relative to conventional farming systems. Alan Savory himself noted that the behavior of the animals seems to change at these high densities. He talked about this herd effect along uh, w where animals um, take more steps and their hooves break up capped soils and knock down old plants. And he wasn't sure um, why it did this, but he knew it, or he thought it was related to the densities of the animals. Um, Tainton also remarked on this mythical herd effect, which supposedly develops at um, large animal densities, and it remains a contentious issue. And that was in 1985, and it seems nothing has changed. Holistic plant grazing is still a contentious issue, and surprisingly, very little research has gone into testing the mechanism of the herd effect. So we set out to investigate this on an experimental farm called Marino Walk um, in the Eastern Cape. The farm has an overall stocking rate of 0.5 livestock units per hectare and it is divided up into three grazing management regimes um, or treatments. For the first being season-long grazing where animals are grazed in, in one camp for an entire season and then move to another one for the remaining of the remainder of the year. This creates a grazing density which is different to the stocking rate, a grazing density of 0.75 livestock units per hectare. Then there is a four camp rotation where animals are rotated amongst four camps at different levels of intensity of grazing and it averages out at around five livestock units per hectare grazing density. And finally, holistic management, uh, holistic plan grazing in blue, where the farm, the area is divided up into many grazing strips, upping the grazing density to 25 livestock units per hectare. Now, to give you an idea of what uh, this looks like, this is a satellite image um, of the normalized difference vegetation index, which, which gives an indication of the greenness of the grass and you can see the, the grazing management treatments outlined in the corresponding colors and if you watch carefully at the black arrow through this time lapse you can see the significant effect that the grazing strips have on the grass as the animals are moved through it in, under the holistic grazing treatment. To show you that this is related to the animal presence, this is an overlay of GPS points um, from animals that were fitted with GPS collars. And you can see that it closely tracks the, the change in NDVI. There's a slight delay 
in the timestamp between the satellite and the GPS collar, but the effect is there. Then on the ground, the effect is also quite obvious. On the left is a grazing strip, strip in which the animals have been for 24 hours and they'll be moving into the area on the right and you can see the stark contrast between the two um, in terms of standing biomass. So the effects of holistic grazing are evident to farmers and practitioners uh, on a day-to-day -day scale. However, we were interested um, um, to test whether the so-called herd effect was responsible for this and whether these effects were actually scalable over the long term and significantly different from the other treatments. Holistic plan grazing advocates propose that it increases uh, what alters the, the behavior and the movement of the animals and it increases the number of steps they take and consequently increases the trampling of dung and urine into the soil and this is encapsulated in the herd effect. Then this is proposed to firstly increase the utilization of standing biomass and reduce the selectivity for palatable species. This is proposed to increase vegetation production both over the short term through increased water and nutrient cycling through the trampling of dung, urine and plant material into the soil and breaking soil cap crusts enhancing water infiltration and over the long term through reducing overgrazing of palatable species and maintaining a favorable species composition. Finally, this is proposed to increase cattle production. There are quite a few studies that have looked at the effects of holistic grazing on vegetation and cattle production, and these have found both an increase, as uh, many other authors have found, no change or decrease in production with holistic grazing. However, what is interesting is that there has been little to no research on the behavioral mechanisms or the herd effect behind which these changes in production, um, uh, yeah, the mechanisms behind these changes in production. So it's with this in mind that we set out to test the following hypotheses. Firstly, that there would be an increased time spent grazing at greater proximities to one another, so they'd graze in tighter herds. Secondly, there'd be an increased number of steps taken and consequent um, trampling of dung. Thirdly, that there'd be an increase in the utilization of standing biomass. And fourthly, that there, it would cause reduce the selection for palatable species at the plant scale and for palatable patches over the landscape. To test these hypotheses, we use the combination of behavioral observations, GPS trackers, as well as triaxial accelerometers, which measure movement um, along the X, Y, and Z axis and can be used to infer different behavioral states. To give you an example of the output of the triaxial accelerometer, this graph shows um, the magnitude of movement on the Y axis over for a 24 hour period and it has been colored or classified into three behavioral states namely grazing, resting and walking. You'll see that there's a lot of grazing in the morning, a mixture of activity in the midday and a lot of grazing in the evening again, um, both at, at 6 p.m., 10 p.m. and even um, at around 3 a.m. in the morning. So basically what we Took, uh, we took this data for um, across the entire sampling period and calculated a percentage time in each spent in each behavioral class and we used individual animals as replicates to conduct an analysis of variance and this graph shows the percentage time spent in three in the three behavioral categories and you can see by the error bars um, and from our ANOVA we found no difference in the time spent grazing um, and resting as well as walking for that matter. Then from our behavioral observations, we determined, uh, at, we recorded at what distance the animals were from one another during grazing activity. And we found that in fact, um, holistic grazing animals 
um, grazed in more dispersed herds relative to season-long grazing treatment. Therefore, they were at greater distances from one another. Then we derived a step and a step rate per minute for uh, from the accelerometer data um, to test whether the animals are taking a different walking different distances or taking more steps and we found no difference in the number of steps taken. Then we looked for hoof prints on dung pats um, and we found that there was no difference in the number of dung or the percentage of dung that was trampled across the treatments. We also measured the percentage of the available plants that were utilized or grazed uh, with bite marks and we found no difference between holistic grazing and the other two treatments in terms of the utilization of the available forage. Then to measure selectivity um, at the plant scale for specific plant species, we used a selectivity index which ranges from um, negative one, uh, where an, which represents an avoidance for that species, um, to positive one, where that species is highly selected for. And when the selectivity index equals zero, it indicates a neutral selection, or they do, they do not prefer it or avoid it. So this graph shows the selectivity index on the y-axis um, for the three grazing management treatments and on the x-axis are five of the most abundant species in the sampling area and you can see that uh, red bars indicate uh, higher selectivity for that species and green bars indicate an avoidance of that species. Here we have Aristida junkiformis, which is classified as an in increase of three species, an unpalatable species. However, the animals, in fact, did eat it and um, even selected for it in some instances. And here are two in increase of two species, which were largely avoided. And then finally, Soteria ingrosata and Thamida triangia are more palatable species, and there was a range of selection and avoidance. Um, for them, but to quantify the overall selectivity across treatments, we calculated the absolute selectivity index um, where zero is non-selective and one is selective and we see that all of the treatments um, lay, lay closer to zero and there was no difference between the, the treatments in terms of selectivity or avoidance of plant species. Then to measure the selectivity at the patch scale, um, basically we use GPS points and, and a, what is known as the Clark Evans Aggregation Index. Now the Clark Evans Aggregation Index um, has a, a, an R value when, and when it is less than one it indicates a clumping of points in space and we would expect that if animals are selecting for palatable patches over the landscape they would display a clumping in GPS points. When R is greater than 1, it indicates a random distribution of points across the landscape. So this graph shows uh, the Clark Evans aggregation index on the y-axis uh, for three sampling points in time, uh, winter 2016, summer and winter 2017. And we see that all of the uh, the sampling points have an R below 1 and are thus significantly clumped. However, when comparing um, between treatments, we only find one um, real difference where the holistic grazing treatment had a more uh, increased clumping um, uh, Clark Evans aggregation index closer to zero. Therefore, we can conclude that holistic grazing did not reduce the selectivity at the patch scale. In fact, it may have increased it. And just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to use this sampling time point in circle in red and show you what the three treatments look like. This is a spread of the GPS points over the sampling period and a corresponding heat map. And you can see the R values below. And um, you'll notice that the holistic grazing R value is closer to zero, indicating a clustering over space. 
So to conclude, we find no evidence for the so-called herd effect as a mechanism behind um, the holistic grazing claims. First of all, we found no effect on the time the animals spend grazing, and counter to the hypothesis, we found that animals graze in looser herds relative to the season-long grazing. Secondly, we found no effect on the number of steps taken, nor on the number of dung paths that were trampled. Thirdly, we found no effect on the utilization of standing biomass, and finally, no effect on the selectivity of palatable plants um, at, the spe at the plant scale, nor for palatable part, uh, patches over the landscape. The implications we draw from this are that advocacy for high-density grazing approaches um, to achieve the mythical herd effect uh, is questionable. Thank you very much for your time. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions around the methods. There's um, also results which I have not shown here around the animal and vegetation productivity. Um, thank you.